What is up everyone, my name is Jasper and in today's video I want to go over how you can set up Zoic ads for your website. Now this video is going to be the first of a four part mini series where I'm going through all of Zoic's features. And of course when it comes to Zoic and any ad network for that matter, the most important part is actually getting your ads to show. Now back in the day when I first joined Zoic, this was in 2019 I believe, I was assigned a account rep and he basically did all of this work for me. But over the years, a lot of things have changed and uh, Izoke introduced their level system. And all of that meant that we basically needed to place our own placeholder from now on. Now the thing with this is that placing these placeholders can seem very scary at first. Uh, I know that when I first needed to do this, I didn't have any idea what I was doing. But after setting up a few of my sites with these placeholders, I kind of got the hang of it. Now I'm currently still not an expert and I'm just going to show you the way I do it and I prefer it. But the great thing about placing these placeholders is that you can really just customize it the way you like it. You can go really heavy on placeholders and have a bunch of ad spots, potential ad spots, uh, or you can go very light. Now before we go into placing all of these placeholders, I do want to mention that a placeholder does not mean an ad. So if you go to your website and you place all these placeholders, you may place 20 plus placeholders on a single uh, article. This does not mean that anyone that goes to visit this article will see 20 plus ads. These placeholders are potential spots and the Azoic AI will just fill some of these spots for those visitors. But without further ado, let's just dive into the computer and go through the step-by-step -step process of connecting your site to Azoic and actually setting up these placeholders. So we're here in a computer and I'm just here in my uh, home screen of Azoic. This is what you're going to see after you created your account. So I already completed some of these steps. So here's your complete account setup. You just go through these and follow their instruction and, and it's just all very straightforward. After that, you've got to integrate your site with Zoic. And the thing with this is there are two options. They have a plugin, which they do not recommend. And they have an option for changing the name servers. Now at first, I really was hesitant about changing my name servers, but ultimately I found out that this is basically the easiest and most straightforward way to do it. So what you got to do is you got to go to your domain name provider. Mine was Namecheap, but you can have any one of them. And then you've got to go to change your name servers. So Izoic will supply you with a few name servers and you just got to change the one that your host provided you with the one that Izoic provides you. And after that, it will take a while before everything is validated, but on Izoic's end, but eventually you will have your uh, check mark as well. Now the next step is setting up your ad testing. Now this is the one I still have incomplete, but, um, but there are a few steps involved. So the first one is a manual Izoic review. Somebody from Izoic's team will review your website and this can take up to 10 business days. During that time though, you can work on these other steps. Um, not that it takes 10 days, but you can already do those. So this is just something you gotta wait for. Uh, but in the meantime, you can connect your Google Ad Exchange and you can turn on your ads.txt. Now this ads.txt used to be very difficult. There was a plugin that you needed to use and you needed to really just, there was, it was complicated, but it isn't anymore. So what you can see here, uh, I already completed it, but there should be two options if you haven't. And one says uh, recommended or something like is oak recommends, something like that. Just click that and then you can click uh, next a few times and after that you click verify and you're done. So it really is made simple and there really is no hassle anymore. But as you can see, I already have this validated. Maybe I still have footage of it and I can show you it right now, but uh, for now, it, this will have to do. After that, uh, the next one is turn on traffic. And this is where you basically just turn on the traffic. Uh, it's pretty straightforward as well. So you just click desktop, uh, tablet, and mobile. And all of these will be set to 90%. Now this means that 90% of your visitors will be routed through Izoke's name servers. But they also have a short explanation here. So Izoke feeds on data. So the more traffic you send in, the better and faster results you will get. Typically, Azoq's learning curve is 45 to 60 days, so results might take some time to ramp up depending on how many Azoq placeholders you have created. Your revenue should improve by 60 to 150% in the weeks to come. So after that, you just click save. Now you may have noticed that I skipped one and that's this one right here, the placeholders. Now this is something I wanted to go over right now. So at a first glance, setting up these placeholders might look a little bit difficult, but it really is pretty easy to do. So right now we're on one of my websites. So I created a sample article that roughly resembles an article that I would write normally. And as you can see, I already have my ad set up here, but we can go through it again. 
So what you want to do is first off, you want to log out of your website. Isoix uh, plugin only works if you're not logged in into WordPress. So the way to do that is to either log out of WordPress or to go into an incognito tab. I'm currently in an incognito tab. And what you gotta do from there is you gotta uh, activate the extension. So this is what it looks like right here. You just gotta click activate placeholders. And this, was, uh, and this will take away all the ads on my website and instead it will show these placeholders. So what you can do from here is uh, I want to first go over a few of the fixed positions. So these are things like the top one here or the ones on the sidebar or on the bottom of the page. So what I want to do here is um, let's just delete this one for now. Let's just click yes. Um, I hope I didn't mess up anything by doing that. But uh, once again, we go here to the placeholder and then we click on create and select location. So right now, when you see, uh, when we hover over things, we uh, have these big blue boxes. So right now, I'm just going to select this complete about us section. So when you click on that, here you go. This is one of your placeholders. So what you can do here is this is a section I wanted in. So you can click on insert here. So now we're in a screen where you have to give your placeholder a label or a name. I usually don't really do that because when you click here, uh, where on the page is this placeholder, you can see sidebar top, sidebar middle, sidebar bottom, sidebar floating, top of page, under uh, page title. These are all a bunch of uh, different fixed locations. So this one is of course the sidebar top. So we click that, it already gives it a label. So then we click on save placeholder and that's that. This is a placeholder that we placed. Now, as I just showed, there are a bunch of different fixed positions. And right here you can see there are a few that I always go for. So the first one is the top of the page, which is the red uh, line right here. Then we've got the sidebar top, then we got sidebar middle, and then we have sidebar bottom. This, and this is the one that I usually make sticky. So let's just see if I did that here as well. Sidebar bottom, let's just make it sidebar floating. This is makes a sidebar floating and there's always going to be a warning here. So this placeholder sticks to the side of your web page. Ensure there's no sidebar content or placeholders underneath. Uh, that basically means that if we click save here, this ad will always be on the screen. So if we've got any content uh, underneath there, that just will never show. So right now just click save placeholder and then it's saved and that's that. Now the last fixed position I always go for is the one at the bottom of the page. This is one that's always interesting because on mobile, this is the one that kind of shows up at the, top, at the bottom of your screen. So aside from those few, I usually don't really go overboard with these fixed positions. I do not like one right after the title. Uh, the ones I do actually implement are uh, right here. So we just click on this one and you see it goes on top, but we want it uh, underneath this paragraph. So you can click insert here. And then you do um, under first paragraph. This is another fixed position. So just click that and save placeholder. Then we do another one, which is uh, under the second paragraph. So we just click on this one and it uh, gives us the right position this time. So you just click insert here. And this is the one um, under second paragraph. So just click that one, save placeholder. So these are the ones that I always go for. And it does look really messy right now, but keep in mind that not every placeholder means an ad. So other than that, uh, basically what I do is I just uh, do this on my own feeling. So right now we have an ad right here. So what I do is I scroll down and right now this ad is barely visible. So that means I click uh, right here. So I just want this one right there. And then we click on uh, select uh, position and this is in content. So let's just click oops, uh, in content one, save the placeholder. So, uh, and this is basically what I do for the entire article. And I forgot to mention this, but you really should be doing this with the article that has the most number of words. So right here again, we scroll down, it's barely visible right now. So we just click again and insert here. And this is the second in content, in content uh, two, save placeholder. And again, and then we go back down again, barely visible, click here. And this is what I mean with I do this on a gut feeling because I don't really uh, have any sort of algorithm or something in place. I just do this uh, the way I would like to see it. So in content number three, and that's that. Now keep in mind that this is a sample article and it is really small, I believe only 800 words. So we can only fit in three right now. We also have three in the sidebar, one on the top, one at the bottom of the, uh, of the page. Now that is really not a lot, but that's a placeholder per every 100 words. For me, that's fine. Uh, I don't want to go overboard. I know Isoak always goes a little uh, heavier on the number of ads. So I kind of want to keep that in check by not placing as many placeholders. 
So after you've set up all your placeholders, you can check if everything is optimized correctly by going to this screen. So this is your isoke.com slash levels. And right now I switched over to a website that already has some isoke ads on there. So it has some stats to show. But right here, you've got your uh, optimization opportunities. So they've uh, categorized that in beginner, novice, intermediate, advanced, and experienced. And what you can do is just start with beginner and just look if you've done everything correctly. So right here, we created placeholders, anchor ads, ads txt, and we have our seller JSON information. Uh, so that's all done. So then we can go to novice. And right here, you can see placeholder density could be done better. Uh, we missing we're missing three points, so we could work on that. Uh, we do have all our AI placeholders. We have our objectionable content done, uh, and we have seven days above 25% in the last, last 10 days. I'm not really sure what this means, but uh, these are basically a measurement in time. So these are things you cannot really optimize, and you will see that in the later stages as well. These are just things that take some days to complete. And right here, you can see that I also can still connect my AdSense. Uh, then we go to intermediate, and right here, pages without revenue, that could be improved. We have our adaptive sizing that is uh, all done. We have our consent management, which you can do in your ISO privacy tab. Uh, this is basically the GDPR for all European visitors, which is something you really need to have set up. Uh, and you can check here if you've done that. Uh, also unwrapped ads we are done and 5,000 visits to Azoq optimized versions. So these are basically the articles or the pages that have Azoq ads on there. We have 5,000 visitors in total to, that, to those pages. So that's checked as well. From there, we can go to the advanced section. And right here, we've got long page placeholder density. So as you can see, I've got a few pages that are longer that are, are missing some placeholders. So we've just gone, gone over the placeholder setup process and a sample article only at 800 words. But let's say you have an article of about 3000 words. If you only place those placeholders for the first 800 words, the 3000 word article will only have placeholders set for those 800 words as well. So uh, you really just need to take the largest article you have and place those placeholders on that one. Uh, other than that, placeholder variety, where uh, we could slightly improve on that. Honestly, anything 90% uh, done is fine for me. And right here, you can see that sometimes it really just takes uh, some time for these things to check off. So 40,000 visits to Azoq optimized versions. It's something I haven't done because this site just hasn't gotten 40,000 visits since I connected Azoq to it. Anyway, uh, last stop is experienced. Uh, right here you can see video ads is zero out of 100. And that's correct because I haven't added any video ads to this website yet. Uh, also again, 60 days above 90%. I'm really, again, not sure what it means. But overall, this is just a great place to check out if everything is done correctly and if you're missing out on certain opportunities. And last up, I quickly wanted to talk about the Azoq level system because this is quite impactful. So right here, we're on levels.azoq.com. And on this page, you can basically see uh, what the requirements are for different levels and what the added benefits are. So most people that are joining have less than 10,000 visitors uh, and they are in the access now section. So this is where I used to be for a long time because I only had two Dutch sites and together they didn't really get that many visitors. So for this level, there really aren't any requirements. There's no monthly revenue, uh, nothing is required. So what you have right here is you have your core ad partners, the free courses, uh, basic support, live webinars, basically everything that uh, comes basic with Azoic. But as you progress, you get more benefits. So to get to level one, for example, you need more than 10,000 monthly visitors, and this can be spread out amongst multiple websites. Uh, you also need to have uh, at least $50 coming in. And what that does is it gets you to the next level. So level one comes with level up learning, um, group onboarding, uh, waitlist for premium, which is uh, your Azoic premium. Now I got into Azoic premium before they introduced the level. So I got lucky there and was on Azoic premium for a longer time. But getting into level one, for example, gets you in the waitlist for Azoic premium. Now the level of learning is, as you can see right here, it's an optional program for ISO customers. Uh, and it's basically an online class that happens once a month where you can learn some new things. So this is yet another benefit of getting into level one. Then on level two, you have once again, higher requirements, but also more benefits. You also get a dedicated rep, which is the one I talked about that used to do all the uh, placeholder setups for me. Uh, so as you can see, I will leave a link down in the description to this page, but as you can see, the higher you go in the levels, the more they will take care of you basically. So uh, right here, you can see uh, on the highest level, you have A++ ad partners, uh, level up learning, of course, you have your dedicated rep, expert access, onboarding team, uh, premium eligible, live webinars, SEO experts, one-on-one uh, -on -one help, Google events, basically everything that you would ever want. 
Anyway, I really hope this video helped you in setting up your own website with Azoic Ads. Now I know I went uh, pretty quickly through placing the actual placeholders, but that's because there really isn't all that much that I do there. I basically go for a few of those fixed positions, the ones that I like, uh, and you really gotta make your mind up for yourself which are the ones that you would like to see on your site. Keep in mind that not every placeholder is an actual ad, but it is a possibility for an ad. So if you never want to see an ad right above your title, make sure there's no placeholder there. So for me, those are basically the ones on the sidebar with the last one being a floating one. Then I want one after the uh, first paragraph and one after the second paragraph and one on the bottom of the page. Aside from those, I really don't do any of those fixed positions, but I just go straight to the in content positions. And these, I basically just go and scroll down uh, up to the point where I can barely see the last one. And that's where I place my newest one. So you do this for your longest article. And once you've done that, all of the data will be transferred to the entirety of your website. So there's no need to do this for every single article. Luckily, you just need to do it for one and the rest will sort itself out. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed it or learned something from it, please consider leaving a like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye.